Hello everyone, welcome to eTech Facebook Live Fridays. I'm Tech Bob, and today we will be reviewing a tech tip on one, why to disconnect the iPad battery and how to do it safely. So this is a common one that you've probably seen out there on Facebook posts or just in the general public uh, for the repair technicians. And the root of it is that Apple devices in general have a very sensitive backlight circuit. And what happens is if the device is powered on and you disconnect the LCD mainly or reconnect it, that instant change in the circuit provides too much power to certain parts and it'll blow things like backlight filters. And in some cases on the newer models like the iPad Pro 12.9, third gen and fourth gen, it'll blow the touch filters as well, which if you've done that screen replacement and then have no touch after, that's probably what's occurred. Now the unfortunate part is on some newer models, the battery is a little bit more of an undertaking to disconnect because of how many screws there are on certain plates and panels. But on the older models, especially the iPad 6 through 9 series now, they're pretty straightforward to disconnect. So I'm going to be showing that now. Uh, to start off with, the tools I'm using in the video are shown here on the screen. I have a set of opening picks. I believe it's a six pack uh, for $2.11. Um, the heating pad. Now, I have one of our versions here. They range. We have some discontinued models on the low end for $19.81 and then the most current one on the $80 range. Any of those will work for this process. And then I'm using the Phillips screwdriver that comes from our iFlying screwdriver set. And that one is $24.99. So to get started, I'm first going to remove the Phillips screw that holds the battery connector down against the battery terminal. So I'm going to take that out. And this screw is very important to use the right one for. Another problem that we see this kind of outside of the disconnecting the battery but putting it back together most uh, more on that point if you put the wrong screw in there the battery won't actually touch the connector on the battery side and you'll end up with uh, a boot looping iPad or an iPad that won't charge various power issues so what I've been doing just prior to this stream just to kind of speed this along I already had my heating pad on and I actually you can't see it on the screen right now I'll move it over so you can see a little bit we set it to 75 degrees Celsius. That's the perfect temperature to help release adhesive without causing any type of damage. So that's what I've had it on for a little bit here. Um, so that what that does is using heat helps release the adhesive that holds the board down. Apple likes to glue the board down against the battery. So I guess one, if you bump the iPad, it doesn't um, cause it to separate as easily, even with the screw there. And two, it just, this is probably a, an afterthought, but it makes it hard to remove. So. What most people will do here is take a guitar pick and just insert it right here where the battery connector is. We are not going to do that. And the reason for that is if you've never removed one of these boards, you haven't seen it, but if you have, you know what I'm talking about. There's little pins that are underneath this board. They're like a copper bronze color. They are very fragile. If you take this guitar pick and just insert right there, there's a chance that you can either bend or break those pins. If that happens, Hopefully you can bend them back. If not, that's a board level repair. You would have to actually replace this whole connector. Um, it's not as common on the iPad, just the iPad series, which when I say that, I mean iPad 6, 7, 8, and 9. We have seen multiple iPad Pro 9.7s though. For some reason, that one gets damaged. The battery connector is damaged more than others. I think it's most likely because of how the pins are, or maybe they're a little bit weaker. But what happens is you take the pick in there, break a pin loose or bend it, and you end up with an iPad that doesn't charge. And that's completely avoidable by just, instead of inserting the pick right there, you insert it a little bit below or above it. We actually recommend inserting the pick wherever there's more boards. So like right here, you don't want to flex this area a whole lot just because it is very thin and you don't want to risk cracking it. So what I'm going to do is take this guitar pick or opening pick insert it right there in between my board and the battery. And it's kind of hard to see. I'll try to get it a little bit better in the camera. But all you need is a slight separation from the, the battery. And you, if you can see the little copper pads on the battery connector side, then you're good to go. That's all you have to do to disconnect the, the, the device's battery. And we recommend this on every repair you do when it comes to, I mean, any device really. On iPhones, it's real big because you don't want to damage the backlight circuit. Same thing goes for iPads. Some techs out there will just make sure they turn the iPad off so it uh, it is not powered on. But the problem is, if you've cleaned iPads before, you know it's kind of this process rotating it, uh, prying away the glass shards. 
when you're doing that, if you accidentally hold this power button for too long, you can power on the device and with no LCD attached, you don't really know that it's on. So the danger is there if you don't disconnect the battery. So we highly recommend doing that. Again, this was a very quick video today. One, to cover why it's important to disconnect the battery and two, how to do it safely. If you do it in this manner, you will never damage a battery connector or a backlight circuit. So I hope this was helpful to everyone. If you have any other tips or say repair issues you've encountered, we've had some people bring up iPhone 12 things recently, more along the lines of how to open them without causing damage. Um, we might do a, a stream on that one on one of our future tips because Apple's kind of changing the way to design devices, which means we kind of have to change the way we work on them. If not, we're gonna cause damage or issues or they may not be repairable. But thankfully, every device up to even the 13 series is repairable. You just have to tweak things a little bit. But hope everyone enjoyed today's video. Apologies, I just realized I left the annotation up there. There we go. Hopefully it didn't cover too much of it, but I'll show the iPad there again, just a close up of what that guitar pick looks like in there. Well, that's all it is so thanks everyone for joining us today keep an eye out for next week's stream. actually we already have it set up i forgot about that so next week is a tool review uh the facebook live so we're going to be reviewing the tool rechargeable polish pen and when you see polish pen it's a little bit confusing of a name I'm working on possibly restructuring the name but what that tool is basically meant for is if you ever have a strip screw it helps in grinding a basically new head into that screw to where you can back it out with a different screwdriver. So if you ever had a strip penelope on one of these newer phones, it's a great tool to use for that. It also has a secondary use of removing ICs more with the grinding method versus desoldering. So we'll show that too. Um, but again, if you're interested, uh, take a look at the stream next week. Hope everyone has a great weekend and we'll see everyone then.